Hello, and welcome to part one of the two-player tennis game tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a start animation to start your game off. I'll show you how to create a ball that bounces around the screen. We'll also cover how to create the stage by using the backdrop options. And we'll also talk about the pre-built functions random and bounce. So go ahead, if you have an account, log in and click create. And if you don't have an account, that's okay. Just click create. And then to save your game, we're going to use file. And then we're going to say save as a copy. And then later on, you can load that file from your computer. Let's begin by creating the start animation to start a game off. And we're going to use this animation to make sure both players are able to start at the same time. So this animation is going to go 3, 2, 1, go before any of the players will be able to start playing the game. So to do that, what I'm going to do is remove the cat sprite. And then I'm going to choose another sprite with the choose a sprite option. And I'm going to type in numbers. And there is glow 3. Now I'm going to go to the costume tab. And I'm going to add another costume by using choose a costume tool. And I'm going to type in number again. And I'm going to choose 2. And I'm going to do that again so that way we have the number 1. So number and then 1. And then I'm going to create my own sprite by using the paint tool. And we are going to type some text with the pixel font. So if this isn't already there, you just have to click this little tab here and then you can choose a whole bunch of different ones. So there's pixel and I'm going to type go with an exclamation mark. And then I'm going to choose a color that's close to the uh, teal like color over here. So let's drop, make this a little bit more green. That looks good. And we're going to make this a little bit larger, so that way it, it's kind of the same size as the numbers. So we're going to make that a little bit larger. And you can see the size that will be in the game. So I might want to make that really big. There we go. And then we're going to center. Perfect. And we have three, two, one, go. And we want to play that animation on the screen when we click the green flag. So let's head over to code. So to start coding this animation, what we need to do is go into events and grab a when click block. Now all code needs to start with one of these blocks here, whether it be when clicked or when a certain button is pressed or when it receives a message, which we'll talk about that in a minute. But for this one, we're going to just start with one clicked. So when we click this button here, the go button, everything underneath this will run from top to bottom, left to right. Next, what we're going to do is create a function. Now, a function is a separate block of code that contains code inside it. And anytime you want to use the code inside that block, you just have to use a single block. So let's go make one. So we're going to go to My Blocks, and we're going to click Make a Block. And I'm going to name this Animate. And usually our functions only do one thing. So this function will be animating the sprite. So I'm going to click OK. And we want to make sure run without screen refresh is not checked. So now whatever I put underneath here as code, I can just use a single block over here to run all that code instead of having to rewrite this code over and over again. So let's go ahead and make some animation code. So to make this uh, sprite look like it's animated, what we need to do is switch between the costumes. So if we look in here, we have four different costumes. Now we're going to set a timer to make sure that it says 3, 2, 1, go in a little less than 2 seconds. Any longer than that, it may make the game a little long and drawn out. So what we're going to do is go to looks, and we're going to use the block switch costume. And we're going to need 4 of these blocks. So we're going to take out 4, and then if we right click them, we can duplicate them. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if we just put all these four together, all we're going to see is go, because code runs in less than a millisecond. So each one of these blocks will be read in less than a millisecond. So all we'll see with our human eye is the word go, instead of seeing three, two, one, go. So to slow things down, we're going to go to control, and we're going to use the wait block. Now, the wait block pauses the code for a certain amount of time. And in Scratch, that is in seconds. So what I'm going to say is 0.3 seconds. This usually gives a nice smooth um, animation. And we're going to need four of those as well. Oh, 
click add a comment. If you ever needed to uh, write a note down about a certain block, you can use add a comment and then type your note. But we don't need that right now. So we're just gonna duplicate and then duplicate. Now what we're going to do is place switch costume underneath the animate block. And we're gonna say costume glow three. And then we're gonna wait 0.3 seconds. Then we're gonna do that for glow two. And then we're gonna do glow one. And then we are going to do costume one, which is if we look under costumes where we put go, but we're gonna switch that name. Let's just switch that to go. There we go. We'll go back to code, make sure go is selected. Now, if we wanna run this, when we click the green flag, all we have to do is get the block named animate from my blocks. Now, when I click this, we should see the animation. So let's take a look at that. So we'll go into full screen, I'll click this, and we have three, two, one, go. Pretty cool. But now we need to center it. So what we're going to do above this animate block is we are gonna position this to the center of the screen. Now to do that, we are gonna use the X and Y coordinates here. So I'm gonna type in zero and zero, which is the middle of the screen. And to make sure it always starts there, we're gonna to go to motion and we're going to use the go to X and Y coordinate block. And we're gonna say zero and zero. I'm gonna place that right there. Now every time I click it, no matter where the sprite is, it'll always be in the center. Now we don't want the sprite here while we're playing our game of tennis, so we need to make that disappear after the animation. So we're gonna go back to looks, and we're gonna use the show and hide blocks. Now if we just put hide here, and we run this once, it'll go three, two, one, go, and it'll hide, if I click it again, it won't show again because the code has already saved that we've hidden the costume. So at the top here, we need to have the show block. So we'll grab the show block and place it right at the top. And now when we click the go button, it hides and we click again, it'll show again. Now that we have that, we wanna send a message to start the game. Because remember when I said, all code starts with one of these blocks. So if we go into events, what's going to happen to let the game know that we are ready to play tennis is we're gonna send a message to the tennis code, which will be the paddle or the rackets and the ball that we're ready to start. And we'll start all their codes with when I receive a message. But we're going to need to broadcast the message start. So we're gonna grab broadcast, we're gonna place it underneath animate and we're gonna make a new message by clicking this little arrow here. We're gonna select new message, and we're just gonna type start. Now that we have that all set up, we are ready to add the bouncing ball. Let's find a good tennis ball sprite. So head on over to choose a costume, and Scratch has already a tennis ball for us as the ball sprite. Now I'm gonna use the classic yellow color, but with your game, choose whatever color you'd like for your game. Now I'm gonna start the sprites code off with when I receive start, because I want to it to start bouncing after the go animation plays. So how that's going to work is when I click this button here, the go button, it's going to make the animation go to the center of the screen. Then it's gonna run through this code here because it sees the animate block. And then it's gonna broadcast start, which then when this sprite receives start, it'll start whatever code's attached to it. So now what we need is a gaming loop or what Scratch calls a forever loop. Now how this works is whatever code you put in here, we read top to bottom, left to right forever until we program it to stop or until we click the stop button. And the reason why we call this a gaming loop is because we want the game to play forever until we want to not to play the game. So let's make this ball bounce. So what we're going to need is a pre-made function so remember, a function is a single block that contains multiple blocks of code. And anytime we want to use those multiple blocks of code, all we have to use is that single block. So that way we don't have to keep copying and pasting all those blocks over and over again, which will then congest our code. And if there's an error, it'll be really hard to find. So we're gonna go over to motion and we're going to find the if on edge bounce. So if the ball is touching the edge of the screen, this block here will be true which will then run code to make our ball bounce. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the forever loop. The next block we need to make the ball bounce on the screen is the move block in motion. And I'm going to place that underneath if on edge block. Now if we play the uh, game, you'll see the animation go 3, 2, 1, go, and the ball will bounce across the screen. But if you notice, the ball is covering up the go animation, so we need to hide that and then show it as soon as it's ready for us to start the game. So I'm going to go into events, and I'm going to grab the one click block. And then we're going to go into looks, and we're going to grab the hide block. So when I click the green button, it'll hide the ball. But then when I receive start, it'll show the ball. So I'm going to place that right underneath when I receive start. So now if we play the game, you'll notice animation, and then the ball will bounce back and forth. Now to make this game fair, we want to make sure the ball always starts in the middle. So we're going to stop there, and we're going to go back into motion, and we're going to use the go to x and y coordinate block. Now I'm going to place that above the show block. And I'm going to set that to 0 for x and 0 to y because that's the middle of the screen. So let's play it again and see if the ball goes to the middle. And there you go. Now we know it's fair for both players because the ball starts in the middle. So if we want to control how fast the ball moves back and forth, we can change the number in the move steps block. So the higher the number, the faster the ball will move, and the lower the number, the slower the ball will move. Now, to make it easier to change in the future, what we're going to do is create a variable. Now, a variable is a location in your computer's memory that stores a single piece of data. And that data is stored in the RAM, to be specific. And RAM stands for random access memory. But we won't go into too much detail on that. All you need to know is that it's a container that's going to store a value that we can use later. So we're going to create one, and we're going to go to variables, and we're going to make a variable. Now, we can think of a variable sort of like a library book in the library. It has a name and a title, an author, and a Dewey Decimal number. So if we want to locate it, we need to find the Dewey Decimal number, then the author, and then the title of the book. And the same thing with a computer. When we want to use a piece of data that we stored um, to be used later, it's going to go to that data location, find its name, and then it's going to return or give us that value. So for this one, we're going to make for this sprite only, because only the ball will be needing to use this. And we're just going to name it speed. So this will be the speed of the ball. And we're going to click OK. So now that we have that variable, what we're going to do is grab the set my variable to block, and we're going to place that on the top of one clicked. So the topmost um, uh, connection to one clicked. And I'm going to set that to the variable speed. And then we're going to set the speed to 10. And then we're going to place that variable speed into move steps. So what we did here is we stored the value of 10 in the variable speed. And then we're accessing that value by using the variable's name speed. So to make this game more fair, we want the ball at the start of the game to move in a random direction, whether it be left or right. And we can achieve this by using the pick a random number function that's pre-made for us in the operators area. So if you select a block here, pick random number to number. And how this works is whatever number we put here and here, it'll choose a number in between there. So right now it's set to choose a number between 1 and 10. We really need two numbers. So we'll do 1 and 2. And now we need to store whatever it picks into a variable. So we're going to make a new variable. And we're going to name this one rand. And the reason why we're naming this rand one, it's short for random, and two, when you go to learn another computer language, computer coding language such as C++ or Java, you'll find that there's a pre-made function in there named rand that will give you a semi-random value when you use it. And we're going to make this for the sprite only, because only the ball needs to use it. Now we're going to set rand to that random number. So we're going to put that function, pick random 1 to 2, inside the set to block. We're going to place that right on top of set speed to 10. Now we need the code to make a decision. And we can achieve that by using the if block. Now how this block works is whatever is placed in here, it'll check to see if it's true. Now if it's true, it'll run the code in here. But if it's not true, if it's false, it'll skip this block entirely. So we're going to need two of these because we need to make a decision based on the number we get from the function pick random 1 to 2.
So we're going to use the operator equal to, and we're going to use the variable rand. And we're going to set this to 0, or to 1. So if rand equals 1, it'll go in one direction. But if rand equals 2, it'll go in another direction. So we're going to duplicate this. And we're going to select 2. Now we're going to place rand equals 1 in the first one, and rand equals 2 in the second. And then we're going to go to motion, and we're going to use the point in direction. Now if we use point in direction and move together, if it's positive, it'll move one way. And if it point in direction is negative, it'll move in the other direction. So we're going to duplicate this, and we're going to set 1 to negative 90, and we'll leave 1 at positive 90. And then we're going to place these blocks of code on top of the go to x and y. So that way we can pick the proper direction of the ball. So let's try this out. So 3, 2, 1, go. We see that rand was set to 1, so it went to the right of the screen. Now if we do this again, now it's set to 2, it should go to the left of the screen. And there we go. Now we have the ball moving in random directions between left and right. And this will make the game so that way not one player always gets the ball served to them first. Now let's make this game look a little better by adding a backdrop into our stage area. So this is the stage area where we play our game. So we're going to go to choose a backdrop. And we're going to choose this cool grid one I found, the neon tunnel. And this will help us line up our rackets in the next video. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And now it makes the game a whole lot more interesting. So if we run the ball game. There we go. It looks a lot better. So in the next video, what we'll be doing is creating rackets and programming them to make the ball spin so that way it'll angle up and down and bounce off all the different walls and have it so that we can control those rackets using the up and down arrow and the W and S key so that way two people can play this game. So I want to thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.